Hi all of my lovely friends and welcome back to my channel or if you're new here, welcome. My name is Mel and I am a developing medium, which means that I am learning and studying and practicing how to become a professional medium. I created this YouTube channel so that other mediums in my position who are learning and practicing could find a safe space to learn and grow together and see that they are not alone. If that's something you're interested in, remember to click like, share the videos, and subscribe, and click the notification bell so you know when new videos come out from me every week. Today I wanted to talk about some of my awesome tips for developing mediumship and things that can help you in your journey. So stay tuned, and as always, thank you for watching. My first tip is obviously going to be doing your sitting work. If you've watched my channel, you'll know that I highly encourage and love to do my sitting work. And that is sitting in the power. I have a few videos on that subject and one detailing how I do it and what I'm feeling and thinking of while I'm sitting in the power or not thinking of. And I will link those videos below for you guys to check out after this one. But your sitting work is going to be one of the strongest things that you can do to develop your mediumship. When you're sitting in the power, you are taking your aura and your field and your energy up to the spirit world and blending with them. And you're charging your energy in the spirit world's energy. So you are connecting yourself to that spirit world energy. Now, when I sit in the power, I also like to connect with my guides and we will, I want to say, play with the energy. They will present themselves to the front so I can feel what it feels like for spirit energy to come to me in the front. They'll do my sides or my back. Um, I've had them come through to me up here before and I've had to feel for that energy up and over my head. And so sitting in the power is a great way, not only for you to build your energy, to build your strength and to build that power with spirit, but it's also another time that you can sit with your guides and practice with them. At least that's what I like to do. Some people like to sit in the power and they don't think or do anything. They just sit and feel the energy and charge themselves. I do do that occasionally, but there are times where I want to sit in that power and feel my guides and go over different things with my guides. So that is totally a personal preference and that can be however you feel works best for you. Another tip that has tremendously helped me is getting a journal and writing in it specifically to your guides. And I have a video on that as well. I can link it down below for you guys. But what I do is after I sit in the power, I write down everything that I felt and experienced, all the things that I remember happening, what I saw, what I heard, the energy levels, where they came from. I write it all down so that I don't forget. And then I have a separate journal just to write to my guide. So after each sitting in the power, I will write a letter of gratitude to them, thanking them for the time that they spent with me to help me. I also write in there randomly. I don't have to just sit in the power to write to them. I will write randomly. So for example, I want to work on cause of death. So I've written in my journal, thank you for helping me focus on cause of death. Thank you for working with me on cause of death and how I can sense and know, see, feel, or hear how a person passed away. I always write in the present tense as if I already have it in my life. So that is a great tip that has really helped me a lot. It also helps build a connection in my opinion. I feel so connected to my guides when I am writing in my journal to them. I feel like they're right around me and I feel like I'm literally just talking right to them. Now when I first started the journal, I didn't have that feeling but I just kept going and now every time I get that journal out, I feel like as soon as I open it, I feel like my guides are right there with me. 
and it's just an amazing feeling. It's a great way to keep communication with them. It's a great way to ask them questions or tell them what you want in your mediumship. So get a journal specifically dedicated to only writing to your guides and let me know how that goes for you. Write it down in the comments how you feel when you're writing in that journal to your guides. Let me know if that helps you. The next tip I have would definitely be positive talk. And I have several videos on law of attraction and using positive affirmations. And I highly believe that always talking positive about yourself is going to help your mediumship. Now, we are in a human body, in a human form, and there's so many things around us, coworkers, family, neighbors, things around us that are just going to, at times, get us down. And so the positive talk is not gonna happen 100% of the time, so let's not be unrealistic here, but most of the time, as much as you possibly can, keep the affirmations, keep the positive talk coming. I am a great medium. I can easily and effortlessly connect to spirit for communication. I can easily and effortlessly go to the spirit world and already have spirit communicators lined up waiting to talk to me. I am confident. I am strong. Those positive affirmations keep repeating themselves, keep repeating those to yourself over and over. As you can see, those all flowed to me so easily I didn't have to think about it. It's because I've said those affirmations over and over. I've written them down over and over, and so now they have become a part of my subconscious. I don't even have to think about them anymore. They're immediately, I am a strong and confident medium. They are immediately right there. So keep those positive talk, those positive affirmations available to yourself. Keep talking yourself up. Don't let the negative get to you. And again, we are human, so it's going to. Let it get to you for a few minutes and get right back up. Get yourself right back up. Build those positive affirmations. If you want to, even get a journal. I am so OCD, I have a journal for everything. My guides journal does not mix with my law of attraction journal. It does not mix with my positive affirmation journal. You should come to my house at hundreds, I'm exaggerating, of notebooks. I keep a notebook for each thing. So I do have a positive affirmation notebook and I write those affirmations in it. If I think of a new one, I'll write it down. If I hear one that I love, I'll write it down. If I'm watching a YouTube channel about affirmations and I like some of them, I'll write them down. And then what I do is I will review them, I'll reread them. And then sometimes I'll just write them over and over and over again, over and over and over again to get them in my subconscious mind. And that's how I'm easily able to lock those in. And that's where you want them is in your subconscious mind because that is the mind that's controlling most of what you're doing. The next tip is absolutely going to be dedication. This journey is something that is long. It's a journey that's hard. I'm not going to tiptoe around that. You're gonna have so many ups and downs when you start to develop. You're gonna have days where your readings are so amazing, your energy level is off the charts. And the next day you could have a reading where you get absolutely nothing and you feel crushed. You feel like you are let down, like you let yourself down or your client down. You're gonna feel those moments of insecurity and those moments of doubt. But I want you to know that you have to have dedication if you're going to do this work. This is something that is not gonna happen overnight. It's not something that you're gonna wake up the next day and you're gonna be Teresa Caputo, right? You're gonna be John Edward. That's not gonna happen. You have to have dedication and have to know that it takes time. You have to have patience. I have been developing for a year now and I have been through so many ups and downs and I keep thinking, well, if I'm such a great medium and, I've, and I'm able to give these amazing readings, why do these other readings where bloops come, I call them bloops, or nothing comes at all, why do those happen? And that's when you go into self-reflection, that's when you go into meditation and look within yourself, but that takes dedication, it takes time and patience. And I'm telling you, it's worth it. There's been so many times where I have wanted to quit, where I've had a bad reading, 
and I have just felt so bad within myself. I felt bad for my client for letting them down. I felt bad in my mediumship that it wasn't as high, um, as high of a standard as I wanted it to be, and I wanted to quit. But then I sat back and remembered that this is my passion. This is something that I want, and this is something that brings so much joy into my life. And I have to remember that dedication and patience and get right back on the horse and keep going. And that's what I want for you guys, for you to have that dedication to know that there's going to be those downward moments, but you pick yourself right back up and you keep going. Another tip that I like is to write down your desires. Write down what you want out of your mediumship. Do you want to become a teacher eventually? Write that down. Do you, you, maybe you don't want to become a teacher. Maybe you just want to do readings for clients. Write that down. Maybe you just want this ability to talk to your friends and loved ones. Maybe you don't want clients. Write that down. Whatever you want out of your mediumship, write it all down. Do you want to be more clairvoyant than clairaudient? Write it down. Anything that comes to you that you feel you want in your mediumship. Maybe you want to get names immediately. Write that down. Maybe names aren't something that you're interested in getting. Maybe you're interested in getting cause of death. Write that down. I want to receive cause of death for all spirit communicators. I cannot tell you how reflective it is to go back. My dog is barking. Back to the subject at hand. I cannot tell you how amazing it is to reflect back on your notes about what you wanted in your mediumship and five six months later and you're reading what you wrote and you're oh my gosh this has come true this has come true I can do this I can do that and then once you've reached that phase of okay all of these have happened what else do you want what else do you want to go for in your mediumship? Okay, I've mastered Claire audience. Well, I wouldn't say mastered, but I've got because I, in my opinion, developing mediumship happens over your entire life. You're always going to be learning. You're always going to be developing. So I would say you've written that you want to be Claire audience. So you could say, okay, I've gotten the Claire audience skills down. Maybe you want to work on clairvoyance. I am clairvoyant. I want to be clairvoyant and start working on a new set of things that you want out of your mediumship. You will be amazed when you look back six months later at the progress that you have made on the things that you want in your life. You will be amazed at what happens to the things that you write down. Now that reverts back to law of attraction, but it works in this same mediumship journey. Write it down. I cannot tell you how powerful it is to just write it down, forget it, and come back six months later. Oh my gosh, that happened, that happened, that happened, that happened. That's my amazing tip for you guys to write it down. My next tip would be to find time to fit things in. So I have a lot of people tell me they don't have time for sitting in the power. They don't have time to give those practice readings and I fit into that boat, believe me. I have a seven year old little girl. As you saw earlier, I have dogs. I have a regular 40 hour a week job and even then, my 40 hours goes over sometimes, so I don't always have the time. But if you can fit it in anywhere that you can, it's going to make a huge difference. So I like to get up. Now, I start work at 6.30 in the morning. So me getting up at 3 is only an hour earlier than I would have. But I like to get up at 3 a.m. to sit in the power. And I have a video on that again. It's going to be down below, like I said before. But for me... Finding that extra hour meant getting up an hour earlier. Now, I might have to go to bed an hour earlier than I would have. I might still go to bed at the same time, even later, but I still want to put an effort into myself. I want to put that love and that dedication into my mediumship, so I am going to get up at 3 a.m. to sit in the power. And again, I would normally get up at 4 for work, so that hour isn't going to make or break things. Now, another thing you could do is during your lunch hour, I get a 30 minute lunch hour and I go sit in my car sometimes and I will meditate or just sit in my car to find peace and solitude and quietness, not thinking about what bills are due, not thinking about what projects I have to get done when I get back, just sitting in solitude. That is a huge tip if you can just find 10, 15, 30 minutes within your day, an hour within your day to fit it in. 
Now, if I don't wake up at 3 a.m. in the morning, I do go for a walk on my 15 minute break and walks are very meditative. So that might be something that you could fit in. You could fit it in on your lunch break. Like I said, I get 30 minutes. Maybe you get an hour. Just find time to maybe go in your car or go in a lunch room, a break room that's private and sit in the power, meditate and, and do what you can in the time that you have. Even those few moments of fitting those times in is going to help you tremendously. And my very last tip for you guys is going to be take a break. If you watched my Media Monday, I was thinking of quitting because I was having so many readings that were just not going well. And I wanted to give up and I wanted to stop. And again, like I said previously, I thought about my dedication and the fact that this work just makes me so happy and I didn't give up. So what I decided to do instead was take a month off. I did not study anything. I did not schedule any readings. I did not schedule any practice readings. I did read some books on mediumship because I do love to read. I don't really watch TV a lot, but I wasn't taking any courses or classes or giving any readings. I took a whole month to myself to regroup, to just take a break and feel better. And I can tell you that when I started my readings after that month, they were amazing. And I knew right then that my body and my soul just needed that break. I just needed that time to myself to not stress myself out so much about, I've got to get these readings in, I've got to get this study in, I've got to get this practice in. And I took a month to just stop all that and refresh myself. And when I came back and I was ready to work, my readings were so good and I was so happy with how they were. Now, I was nervous that taking a month off from practicing and jumping back in that my readings were gonna be off, and I can tell you that they were not. I felt that they were back to the standard they were before I was having my downward slope. And so again, I knew I needed that break. So I want to tell you if you're developing that it's okay to stop and take a break. It's okay when you need personal time or you need time to just walk away from the development because the stress of it is getting to you. I took an entire month off and it just made things so much more clear for me. It put a lot of things in perspective for me and it just helped my mediumship grow. Taking a break and stopping actually helped my mediumship grow. So those are my tips for my lovely mediums who are out there working their butts off to become and do what is their passion. Let me know what you guys think about these tips. Let me know, do you have other tips for us? Can you leave them down in the comments so those of us that are learning and developing could see what you do and what tips you have. Maybe those tips could work for somebody as well. Please leave those down in the comments. And as always, thank you, thank you, thank you to all of you so much for watching these videos, for subscribing, and for sharing them with your friends who are also developing. I will see you guys all in the next video from Developing with Mel, and I hope you all have a great day, my lovely friends.